toy where we Hey everyone, Fluff here. So I'm going to bring you a quick Quake guide, going over with an overview of the sort of things I'd run and uh, where I'd run it, as well as the skill options, what upgrades you're looking for, and then some advice on the toy workers and upgrade tree pathing. So to get this started, I'm going to show you the relics. So for doing stuff like Campanella Normal and Campanella Extreme, this is what I would go to run. Um, the reasoning behind all this is attack power is very important and is a hard stat to max out, but attack power is also the basis of all damage in the game, so getting a higher attack power early and then supplementing that with more skill power and critical damage will give you much higher and much more volatile DPS gains throughout your run. Um, Mercy is the highest attack power value that you can get just straight from the get-go, which um, is an equivalent of having a fully stacked turret grease without having to deal with turret grease. Um, to get this relic is kind of hard though, so it comes with seasonal. Um, it has a chance of appearing, and then when it appears, you, you can buy it, and then if you succeed in a run, you have a 100% chance to replicate a relic that you haven't already replicated before. So if this is the only relic you've never replicated, you, you'll replicate it. Um, but if you fail a run, it's only around 20-30%, to 30 depending on how well and how far you've progressed through your run. This could be a problem and make it quite a hard relic to chase down, so alternatives to this would be not as good, but still going to give you a nice DPS gain and give you um, the same stat. Uh, I would recommend running Defense Suit of Merciless Attack until you have this relic. Um, reason for this being it's 50% of attack power, which would be 100 attack power on Quake. Um, I wouldn't worry about the defense fixed at zero, honestly, because apart from early in the run, you're really not going to feel defense at all. Um, defense is mostly just used as a way of gaining attack power via defense suit of retaliation. Once you get into the higher levels of things, thing damage becomes so volatile and lethal that even having 90% defense and a bunch of range damage reduction and melee damage reduction, you're still just going to find yourself getting one shot by mechanics like Protean, who can apply shock and reduce your defense anyways. Like, I wouldn't worry about the stat outside of just using the stat as a way to scale damage via a defense suit. Um, that being said as well, um, if you don't have this as an option, this is a really easy thing to get, uh, same as special charge module. It's not difficult at all. Like at all, the method that I suggest for farming some of these tier one relics that you don't have would be to go back through Zerni, the first galaxy, and just run it until you have them. It might get a little tedious and boring, but it would also give you a nice chunky relic pool to kind of narrow down your options when you're trying to farm the harder relics like your Mercy and your Convergence skill, skill modules and stuff. Uh, special charge modules, pretty clutch. Um, this one's not too hard to get, there's no real replacement for this, uh, apart from just putting something else in that does cooldown, but nothing's going to do the job of Special Charge Module, as well as Special Charge Module does it. Uh, again, to get this, you can just run Zerni and farm it out until you eventually have it. Attack Defender is a lot of attack power to be gaining. This will give you 200 attack power, so the equivalent of 100% um, attack power on Quake. Uh, you can easily stack things like these early into the run just by finding something like a Venom Caster or a Flamethrower and self-damaging yourself. And every time you take a point of damage from the Flamethrower or the Venom Caster early, I highly recommend the Venom Caster for this. It will actually give you stacks for it. So you could pre-stack this before you even do bosses. Uh, this works on any Heavy Breaker that can pick up Venom Casters. Um, Failing that, if you don't have these, again, you can supplement them with relics that do similar jobs, just that these are the best ones for those jobs. Uh, for Seasonal, I would take out Attack Defender and throw in Medal of Growth. Uh, this will give you 5% attack power per stage, um, and there's 30 stages in total in Seasonal if you're going for the full 300. This will equate to being around 300 attack power, and I think if you're on Lightning or Uzi, uh, this is just quick math on the top of my head, so I could be wrong. It should be around 375 attack power. Um, uh, if you're also doing seasonal, I would remove critical defender and throw on bonus coin. Uh, 
reason for this being the amount of scaling you're going to get from these two relics being growth and bonus coin is going to be astronomical in the full length of the run and will help scale you up and you can just pick these up in the run in the, uh, in seasonal. Uh, the sort of stats you're going to be looking for will be attack power relics to help cap out your attack power, um, some skill power relics to help scale your attack as uh, to scale from your attack power, as well as other critical chance relics to cap you out on critical chance as critical defender will be giving you 50% and then some crit damage and uh, your your target relics stuff like status effect target and your um, petrify target. So, a quick note here as well, whilst we're on the topic of target relics, status effect target is a little wrong in its wording, and can be misleading. So it says 50% damage increase against enemies under status effect, but what this really does is it's 50% damage increase for each active status effect. So, that being said, if you find things like shock reactor, or poison reactor in your runs, and also find status effect target, Combining these together will give you 50% for Petrify, and then 50% for Shock, and 50% for Poison, so 150% total for just having 50%. This is a very important relic to find on every break. Moving over to skills. Spiral Punches. Um, this is your bread and butter. This is Quake's go-to skill, basically. You'll be spamming this a lot, and you want to be scam spamming it often. This will reduce the defense on enemies hit once you have this upgrade, and this is the starting upgrade I would suggest to use. Um, by 5% per hit, stacking up to 20 times, so 100% total, as well as giving you 5% skill power, stacking up to 20 times, so 100% total. This is really strong. Reducing defense on enemies is... I, I can't even underestimate how big of a DPS gain removing the defense on an enemy is and is almost mandatory in multiplayer and single player if you can get it to get some sort of defense shred, be it penetrator rounds or even a skill that has it. Um, outside of this, I would then start looking for uh, upgrades like the cooldown reduction, double punches to be able to just double your DPS output as well as making stacking your debuff faster, and the skill power. This skill is going to... you're this, you're going to smash this skill and your bun's going to break. Um, next up, in terms of importance, would be your Spiral Field. Spiral Field will be the way that you crowd control enemies by applying Petrify. Uh, you'll want to get, get cooldown reduction when you can, so you can do it more often. You'll want to get the 50% damage received for 10 seconds for targets by Spiral Field. Um, just doing 50% more multiplier and making your spiral punches, your tremors hit harder, as well as your venom caster. Yep, you're going to want to find a venom caster. Um, it's really important, and to note, whenever a skill says something like this, Bronte has something similar, Mountain has it on his something similar on his leap, uh, Sandman, sorry, has something on his grenades that does a 25% version as well. These all apply to your teammates' damage as well. So debuffing an enemy with this makes them even more valuable in multiplayer settings more than it would in single player, but it's still important for single player. Uh, upgrades like this, however, where it says upgrade spiral field damage to a thousand percent of attack power, are uh, bait. This is trap. No, naughty. This is terrible. Um, the reason for this is it's only doing it by your attack power, which in the grand scheme of things, where you're going to be hitting uh, for millions with your tremors, millions for your spiral punches, and just doing big damage and burst damage, a thousand percent of something that's capping at a thousand uh, is only going to be ten thousand damage. It's almost a waste when any other DPS related upgrade from any of these other things will just equate to being more damage in the long term. Uh, I would skip this out even in favor for guard stuff, and I I don't like guard stuff, and I'll explain why when I get there. Uh, moving on, uh, Tremor will become one of your big burst buttons uh, later into the run as well, so you'll want to pick up 100% skill power, and you'd also want to pick up the defense shred. So, the reason why we want the defense shred, even though we have one on Spire Punches, is because certain bosses like Medusa, Sand Shark, Wind Shark, 
any boss really that is stationary by a wall, they have an issue where your spiral punches will bounce once on them and then break on the back wall. You can avoid this sometimes by standing at odd angles, but 90% of the time your punches are going to break on a wall. It's unfortunate, but it, it happens. In those scenarios, tremors will become our best way to um, apply the defense shred, and as well as just being a great tool for like crowd controlling and mobbing enemies in 3x3s and 4x4s. These other upgrades really don't matter too much. You only really care for the uh, defense shred and the skill power and the cooldown. Uh, weapon power is a useless stat when you're playing a skill build. Um, you shouldn't be trying to make your worst thing better. You should be trying to make your great thing greater. Uh, tremor radius also doesn't really matter as tremors innately has a kind of pull-in effect to it. So you, if as long as you're kind of near the enemy, you'll hit the enemy. Moving on to guard. Guard, guarding and counterattacking is kind of what I would like to call like a new player bait. Uh, it feels really good whilst you're starting out with it, but the problem with it is your optimal damage windows are going to be whilst the enemy is under a status effect. Uh, this means they're going to be frozen or petrified and you're not going to be able to proc your counterattacks. Um, so for this reason, we tend to avoid these upgrades, but sometimes you can't help what's on offer. Like, if that Spire Field upgrade that I was just talking about with the 1000% attack powers on offer, and so are two of these, you're kind of forced to take the lesser of two evils. Um, in those scenarios, I'll take things like this, where it says resets Tremors cooldowns on performing a counterattack, as you're going to have some time every now and then where the boss is going to be immune, performing one of its phased attacks, and you're going to have an opportunity to counterattack and you're not going to do damage with the counterattack because they're immune, so you might as well get a reset out of it. Um, vice versa, as well. If this is on offer, this is also not a terrible option, but I would still prioritize Tremors and Spiral Punches over anything else, and that one Spiral Field upgrade that I was talking about with the 50%. Uh, moving on to weapons, I choose to start with the Chem Drills. Um, having Poison is pretty strong. Poison is a... Uh, percentile enemy max HP DOT effect, so the later into the run poison becomes much much more valuable and much more stronger and you'll actually end up doing billions of DPS with just poison alone in seasonal. Um, but the weapon we would in favor to drop this for would be a weapon that has some sort of ammo system to it, be it a flamethrower, a gatling gun, a missile launcher, or a Venomcaster, so we can start using some of those relics that have things like Critical Power Magazine, where it requires you to be over 70% ammo to get the 100% critical damage. Um, now it's kind of lengthy, I'm sorry, but uh, moving over to Toy Workers. Accessing toy worker system. I'll give a brief rundown here of why some are good and some are bad. I'll start with the bad, and they all fall into this category really when uh, I list these uh, ones. So both Goldhound and Power Dog only give you 10% of the respective power that they uh, say on, their on the toy worker. So weapon power and skill power. In the grand scheme of things, this is not much when you could be taking something else that will offer you more DPS gains. Um, especially since the best toy worker in the game is free to you the moment you start playing. Um, I would just avoid these. These are just a waste of crons. If you have a surplus of crons like I do, then you might as well throw some in there, but I, I just wouldn't. I would wait for them to get reworked eventually in the Toy Worker 2.0 system update that they are planning to do eventually. Uh, little Fly, unfortunately, honestly, I like this little guy. He looks cool, but his, again, turbo boost 5% skill cooldown. You're just not going to feel this. It's never going to be useful. Uh, hopefully, they do some sort of reworking to make this better. Like... Personally, for me to be taking these, these would have to give a much bigger bonus, like Turbo Boost would have to give 50% survival skill, Power Dog would have to give for like around 40 to 50% skill power, as well as same as Gunhound, these, they're just not that great. Um, high V2 is not terrible, it's actually one of the better options in here, I would probably rank it like, if I had to give a top 3, this would be the number 3. Um, Mainly because of the fact it can give you a shield. Shields are a pretty strong source of one-shot protection. As in, if you are at full health and have a shield and an enemy hits you for, say, let's say, 4 million, 
it would only drop you to one health and the shield would prevent you from actually dying. Um, even going past the, like, say your 20% uh, immunity frame is still on cooldown, which has a two minute cooldown, it's just not visible in game. Um, this shields are very, very strong and if you can find a way to get one, uh, this is good because it lets you start using relics like critical uh, power shield for 100% power shield whilst 100% uh, critical damage, sorry, while shielded, as well as skill power shield and attack power shield and status effect shield and all these great tier one relics that give very big bonuses. Uh, I'm going to come back to Goldhound. Uh, Gold Rich, unfortunately, is one of the rel uh, toy workers that has fallen out of favor. Uh, he was one of the workers that was really good prior to Extreme coming out and prior to Seasonal coming out, um, before Goldhound was even released. Um, he just doesn't give that great of bonuses anymore in comparison to better options. Uh, resource gaining uh, sources are really handy to have, but unfortunately he only gives you the 50 once. He's like a one planet bonus coin. Uh... It's just unfortunate he's, he's not that great anymore. He's still better than these as an option, but not better than the next two. Going to Medic V2, this is technically the best DPS option for instant early gratification. Uh, as well as just having a nice little healing bonus, which is something that's kind of hard to find and run sometimes without sinking too many coins. Um, this is like a nerfed Giant's Neck. It gives you half the value of what Giant's Neck would give you, but the fact it's giving you a lot of attack power early um, means you're just going to have a lot more early damage if you didn't take this uh, than if you didn't take this. Uh, this is what I would run in stuff like Extreme, and you probably noticed this in any of the videos that you've watched of mine where I'm playing Extreme. I have this worker equipped. Um, if you're doing Seasonal, however, that's where Goldhound comes in, and even in Extreme, Goldhound is still useful, and we use him in our Extreme speedruns, as with resetting runs, usually quite a lot to trying to get an optimal start, uh, as well as a good boss lineup when we're actually doing multiplayer speedruns. Um, and because in those scenarios, we're not planning for bad luck, we're planning to have good luck, um, we take Goldhound so we have more opportunity to have the good luck. Uh, and why what I mean of this is because we're having more coins via the 20 resources, it allows us to re-roll shops a little bit more often, um, buy weapons that otherwise we would usually be priced out of, as well as relics we would otherwise be priced out of. So we would be gaining more DPS from having more money than if we took any other option in the long, long term of the run. But in seasonal, because of how much, um, how many planets there are, this will end up equating to being more value than any other toy worker in the game. This will be like having a second bonus coin. Um, which will in turn give you around 70 coins per planet if you have this and bonus coin, hence why I was talking about having both coin and growth. Uh, if you combine the two, you'll be able to buy relics and weapons that you just wouldn't usually be able to afford at points where you usually wouldn't be able to afford them in the first place. So TLDR of all of that, Goldhound good for seasonal and sometimes good in extreme if you're trying to speedrun. Um, Medic V2, really good in extreme and gives you a lot more early damage and would be my suggestion to take if you have it. Moving over to upgrades. Ready to upgrade. I have everything maxed out. Um, you get 174 points total over the seasons and then we're going to be getting 12 more for free at some point to finish the trees. But until then, my personal suggestion of pathing in the tree would be to put 5 points going all the way down to get resources as fast as possible. Resources, if you just heard my explanation about Goldhound, same reasoning here. Having extra resources means you're getting more opportunities presented to you to get the better things, which will increase your damage more than what any of these other trees will. Uh, once you have resources, I would then move into Defense Tree. Uh, getting 5 points into Health 1, as it's an additive, so it's going to give you a flat value um, onto your base health, Sorry, not onto your base health, adding onto the end of your base health. Um, which will then give you more damage through things like Giant's Neck. Uh, and then I'd go 5 points into melee. Picking up regen, this means you're not having to pick up things like Ambrosia. Uh, you don't have to get these health regen relics, as you already have health regen. 
and it gives you more money to play with in your run by not having to pick up those things. Recovery actually does decent work here. I would put five points into that and then get gain shield. Um, reason for recovery is you need it to get to gain shield, but at the same time it's also going to be buffing your regeneration as it's just increasing the amount of HP you're recovering in general. Gain shield, this is another way of gaining a shield, so it's going to be less relics we're having to buy, and if you've heard my description on why I like Hive a little bit, um, this is going to let us use relics that otherwise we use and we otherwise wouldn't usually use or be able to utilize as often, as well as just giving us more safety to work with relics that would usually hurt us as we'd have a shield to eat that damage. Uh, then I would max uh, start maxing out nodes that are pretty important to max out before moving into Offensive Tree. So I would max out Buff Adapt, I would then max out Status Effect. Not Status Effect Duration, there's a reason this has no points in it. It's useless. Um, it, if you're burned, that can be a good thing. You can use per You can use burns to proc Perfect Dodge. So the DOT effects that get added to your player can sometimes be very useful and honestly sometimes preferred to have. Uh, other than that, there was a bug at one point with this stat. I haven't tested it too much really to see if it's been fixed or not, but this used to also reduce the duration of your status effects, which was a big problem. So until I have confirmation of that is fixed, I'm avoiding it completely. Um, Status effect though, uh, increasing your own duration of your status effects are very powerful, so having more of it, even better. Buff adapt, this actually applies to things like shields, um, any skill upgrades that you have that have things like increases skill power by y, per uh, for, by y percent for y amount of seconds, like this buffs all those, as well as buffing the duration of um, the buffs you get from things like Critical Power Magazine. Very, very handy, very useful. Also bust the duration of Sandman Shield. It's for any Sandman players out there. It's pretty nice. Once you have these maxed out, I'll then max out Health 1. And then I'll head over into Offensive Tree. You've, you're forced to put 5 points into Weapon Power to open up the rest of the tree. Um, once you've got your 5 points in there, I would then put points into Skill Power to work down to get into Skill Cooldown. Uh, 5 points in each. And then I would work over to get 5 points in Critical Damage. And then 5 points in Critical Chance. And then from there, I would put one. Uh, I would put the point into kill power. This helps because in seasonal, you might do some exploration tasks that's here and there. Preferably, would only take boss rooms and maybe the alienists room, which is the one the the frozen planet with all the eggs. Uh, so, again, a hundred attack power. It's very 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 nice. Um, penetration. This stat is either really really good or either really really bad. The way that you determine if it's really, really good for you is depending on the breaker you play. If you're playing someone like Quake, this stat becomes useless as you have ways of reducing defense, so this becomes completely avoidable and you don't take it. But if you're playing breakers like Jungler who can't reduce defense, or you're playing breakers like Uzi or someone like Shuri who has Petrify and raises defense, penetration becomes really nice as it's a giving you something that you otherwise didn't have and defense is an important stat to keep in mind when it comes to enemies, as enemies have defense values much like your breakers do. Uh, once you've got all that done, you can pretty much max out whatever you want at that point, depending on what breakers you play more. Um, I personally would max out crit damage and crit chance from this tree, as these are just universal and useful on everyone, as well as skill uh, cooldown and skill power. Uh, Weapon power I would max out last due to how lit, like, there's not many breakers in this game that go with a weapon power build. Most prefer to go a skill build. Um, once you've got all these maxed out, though, I would then work into getting health 2 maxed out and just start to work on getting some of these nodes maxed out that uh, are maxed out in this tree. Um, weapon drop's kind of a placebo. You don't really feel this being too much. It's only 10%. It's not going to... It's not going to make or break the game, but if you have five points spared by the end, you might as well just max it out. Uh, this kind of got rambly, I'm sorry. Uh, if this was helpful, please remember, like, comment, subscribe, as well as say what other type of videos, what builds you would like to see. 
meta builds, meme builds, or just in general, like, I could do anything, really. Uh, I'm gonna have some videos coming out soon where I go over more mechanics. Um, I want to break down what each of the status effects do, and how how they work, why you would take them, as well as uh, different boss mechanics and systems within the game that just aren't clear to the player, and just try to really liven up uh, this player base a bit, as I've seen quite a lot of people struggling, and it's a fun game. Once once you know what you're doing in it, it's it's a blast. Um, 